Hey there, it's Luke back once again for the M5 Stack official channel. In this week's lesson, we're going to be talking about networking, specifically how we connect to Wi-Fi networks, what information we can get from them in a scan, and how we could potentially use this information for penetration testing purposes. In a previous lesson I did about JSON and uRequests modules, I showed you how we could use the UI flow specific Wi-Fi CFG module to connect, but in this lesson we're going to be using a lot of the functions from the network module. As with the last couple of videos that I've been doing, we're going to be using the Moo editor. Again, if you haven't used the Moo editor before, I recommend that you go and look at the previous videos for getting set up in this fantastic IDE. First we'll import the M5 UI M5 stack modules in order to display the text on the screen. Then we're going to need to import the network module to deal with all of the network specific functions. You can see these by typing network into the REPL and then followed by a dot and then press tab and we can see all of the functions we need here for all kinds of different networks. When we set up a network we can either configure a station or an access point. A station is a device that is connected to a router and an access point it means that the M5 stack device itself will be the host of the information and other devices connecting to it will be the clients. For instance, when you connect to your device's access point in order to configure the Wi-Fi. But to set up the device in station mode, we first type network.wlan and then in brackets we type network.sta underscore if. Then we need to activate this station by typing network.active and then in the brackets type true. Now our station is ready to scan so we can start by setting up a LCD print function so that we can display all of the scanned networks onto the screen of the device. Otherwise you could also type wifi.scan into the REPL so you can have all of the networks printed out on your computer. And now we'll see a whole bunch of information presented on the screen but it looks a little bit garbled. It's basically appearing in a tuple. A tuple is kind of like a list, but we cannot change the elements in it. You'll also notice this B and then a quotation mark surrounding the access point's name. This is because the first two elements in the tuple are in byte data format. To make this data more human readable, we'll need to strip that away or decode the byte data. But firstly, let's check out what each of these elements in the tuple list mean. To do that, we'll go to the official MicroPython firmware documentation and we'll go into the network module. Here, if we scroll down, we can see that we have these disconnect functions and scan, which we just used. It says here that we get the SSID or the access point's name, the BSSID, or the MAC address, also known as the physical address, the channel, RSSI, which is the signal strength, auth mode, whether it's WEP, WPA, and so on, and hidden, which will show true or false to show whether the network is hidden or not. Now this scan function is actually returning a tuple of tuples. So if we try to print one element from the tuple, you'll notice that it gives us one set of data for one specific access point. We'll need to be able to strip the names of all of the access points and display them on a list. First we assign a tuple from the function into a variable. And then we use a for loop to iterate through the first segment of the tuple and decode it, basically removing the B and quotation mark prefix. Now if we run the program we can see a list of all the networks in our range. 
but it would be good to know the signal strength of each of those networks so we know which one is best to connect to. We can do this easily. If we go back and look at the network information, we can see that index 3, knowing that the list starts from 0, 1, 2, 3, is the index of the RSSI. So we can add to our LCD print I3, and then we need to make sure that it's turned into a string in order to display it. There's been quite a lot to cover so far in the lesson, so I think I'll leave it at that for this week. Following on in the next lesson, we'll see how to convert that MAC address from a byte data into a regular MAC address, and then look it up on a MAC vendor ID service. Eventually, the intention of this program will be to select from a menu of the scanned networks and then get a lot of data about each of the different networks that we could use to either connect to them or even capture packets. I'm not entirely sure if that's possible with MicroPython yet, but it's something that I'm currently researching. Hope you found this lesson useful, and if you did, make sure to leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.